Hey what's up everyone, this is Ants Portugal and I'm here today with a brand new video and a new ant care species guide. Now, today we're going to be talking about uh, Camparotus turkistanus, which I'm hopefully not butchering the name of, but I probably am. Now, this species is a species that comes in a few varieties of color that range from a total yellow variant to a completely uh, dark brown variant. Now, if you buy them online, yellow variants are usually a lot more expensive, but that has tended to diminish over the last few years, so you can get them for pretty cheap nowadays. Now, um, they are awesome species in their own regard, though they are not for everyone. No, not, not everyone has a taste for them, because of a few things we're going to be talking about a little bit later. So, first of all, they're gorgeous and almost everyone can agree that especially the yellow or yellow slash brown variant are pretty much just beautiful ants, and different colored ants in general are uh, attractive to people. Now, the thing that uh, will make people be unattracted to these ants is the size of the colony, which is very, very low. They have only up to maybe 200 workers, not more than that, and usually not more than uh, 150 or something. That can be good, that can be bad. Uh, personally, I love it. Uh, a simple colony and easy to keep. It is always uh, welcomed and heartful, heartwarming to watch and they are pretty cool. Now, let's get into them first. They are native from uh, Kazakhstan, Mongolia and the northwest of China. So they are an Asian species, though they are actually temperate. They are from the center, center north part of Asia and therefore they do actually hibernate from um, somewhere in October to somewhere in February. It's not very common for ant keepers to actually hibernate them. I don't know if that's because most people just come, just knowing that they're from Asia assume that they're tropical and therefore do not require hibernation. The truth is, they do not necessarily need to hibernate, but you can if you want to, right? So if you keep ants uh, and you like to hibernate your ants and you have temperate and exotic tropical species you can hibernate these species with your other temperate species because that is actually what they are. They are not tropical and should not be treated as such. They can not hibernate, but you must keep in mind and have the notion that they do probably do that in the wild, especially in most cases though, you know, if they live far south enough where it does not get as cold, they will in the wild as most ants do, adapt to a non-hibernative state of living. Now, conditions when it comes to temperature and humidity, they are pretty, um, they are pretty tough and they actually can handle uh, a rough range. Most people, seeing that uh, I actually think most people see them as tropical ants, uh, will actually be very strict, but you don't really have to, you can let loose a little bit. Now, uh, when it comes to humidity, they actually enjoy it kind of dry, you know, they can go to about the 30%, though I would never have any ants living below 50. They can also handle stuff as, as high humidity as 70, but to this particular species, I would try to actually keep them at 50% in the outworld or, you know, most room humidity is somewhere around 50% and as you have some special case, uh, especially if you live in the same sort of temperate area as these ants are found on, which is the kind of middle way of the North Hemisphere, you'll have a normal house humidity of 50% or somewhere along those lines. Now, I would actually humidify the nest, though they, they can live without that. It's always important to give them a gradient in the nest for them to move the brood around and take care of that as they please. If you need any tips and tricks or if you need some new ideas and actually if you just want to learn about uh, gradients in humidity and temperature, you can watch one of my videos I've done pretty much very recently which 
talks about just that, uh, how to hydro and thermoregulate for hand, your hands, or rather, how to make your hands thermo and hydroregulate for you, which is a lot less work compared to, you know, most other animal and exotic and weird pets one would have. Now, the temperature anywhere from 23 degrees to 28, I would keep them. They can take colder, they can go to like the, the 15 Celsius, I'm talking Celsius, so if you need Fahrenheit, Google it. Uh, 15 Celsius, they could handle it. I would not keep them at that state because the brood development would be very, very slow and they would probably start the, to the hibernation state. You know, they'd start to, you know, to begin to prepare their borders to biologically shut down for a while. Uh, anything above 30, they can handle for a while, but don't leave it at that for a long, long time. You'll cook them alive and uh, nobody wants inside soup inside of you. So don't do that to your ants. Now, uh, knowing all of that and knowing that you can keep them in your normal household conditions, you can get yourself some if you if you can and if you want and why should you you know they are in my opinion great ants they have you know pretty striking colors and if you if you keep them in you know they're very they're very pale the yellow variant is very very pale pale yellow but if you keep them in say a black or dark background and soil and nest you can uh, make them become very um, shiny, you know, they, they really stand out because the ants are of a be beautiful uh, raw honey kind of, kind of color and that's just amazing for an ant because it's not something you see all the time. It's different, therefore it's, for most people, pretty cool. Now, what do you feed this honey-colored ant? Well, honey. Uh, you can feed them honey, uh, honeydew, uh, honey water, sugar water, and they will love the sweets, all right? They also need to take in some protein, so uh, cut, cut up mealworms and flies, they really enjoy flies. Uh, they have majors, um, and the, these majors will be awesome at hunting the 3 millimeter uh, fruit flies that you can get at pet shops. The workers will probably do best hunting the 2 millimeter um, fruit flies, but you can feed them a variety, and variety is always great. They can also eat some fruits, but even though most Camparona species enjoy fruit, these species, which I've kept in the past, does not seem to be as, as prominent to taking in and actually eating food like apple and stuff. Uh, you know, I don't know, it's I don't know if it is because of the sizes, and food just is usually a big piece, or if it's just um, the preference of the species or maybe of the colony, each colony is still a colony of its own. So anyway, you can try because most Camperonas are very, very prolific omnivorous, which means they'll do, be they'll do best with a diverse, varied diet. Now let's talk about sizes before we finish off. Um, the queen of this ant species is a little bit above a centimeter long, uh, maybe like 12 to 13 millimeters. The, the workers are somewhere around the 6-7 millimeter range and the soldiers can vary from the size of the workers all the way to the size of the queen. You can have very big workers, you'll not have a lot of them, but you can have some and you can have every single size of worker, uh, or should I say soldier, between the 6 and the 12 millimeters. Uh, now, why don't you have a lot of workers? That's because the colony itself does not have a lot of ants. They only have a single queen, they are extremely, extremely monogenous, and they can only have up to like 200 individuals. Normally, you won't get them to stabilize at 200, you'll get them to stabilize somewhere between, between 100 and 150. Now, that is not a lot, but these are actually big ants, so they are a fun and, a, and very much of a blast to watch. They are Camponotus, uh, they are big and not too big, but they are still, you know, big ants, uh, very cool to observe in the naked eye, 
Uh, you don't need no, 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 no special glasses or phone cameras to really watch them and watching them is really p very pleasing. They are normally of a calm demeanor and they'll often be out foraging in great numbers. A colony of 100 workers will probably have a permanent 20 workers outside, which is not something that you can say for most and for, well, for most at least Campanora species when they have 100 workers in their colony, for example. My Sun Empire, the biggest species on the channel, has or had at the moment of the last update somewhere above the 100 worker mark and they usually don't have 12 workers out at, at the night time, which is when they forage. Also, Cameronus Fructistanos is technically a nighttime forager, but I found out that at least the colony that I owned would be out foraging pretty much the same way during the day or the night. Uh, for yours it can change because these, these things can change depending on environment conditions and colony itself, the, the personal preferences, one could say, of the colony. They are great to watch, they are a blast to feed and they do not need a lot of space. So if you do not have a lot of space or if you just want another colony that is just pretty interesting and very, very easy to take care of, well, Campanaros to Cristanos is the perfect end species for you. They actually live very well in a grassland-based natural environment. It would be great for them and that, that would have, first of all, a very small size and a very easy upkeep because you will not have to clean at all after them and the amount of food you need to provide to them is very, very minimal compared to a big-sized colony. So they are, in my opinion, very great ants. To some, the fact that they have very low numbers can be an attractive, but you do you. So, um, good end keeping for you all. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Oh, uh, by the way, if you're looking for a yellow Campanotas ant, which actually has a decently large ant colony size and uh, is actually poly polygynous, uh, I'll just say it's Campanotas Fetchskoi, which I cannot say, but I'll write down. And uh, if you know, if you want some of that, or if you happen to know someone who is interested in a yellow Campanotas, and that's why they clicked on the video, and they are and attracted to the small colony size of Campanotas Trucistanos, then recommend them, or you yourself, uh, take a look at that and at ant species. I have not personally kept them myself, so I cannot say a whole lot of them to you and explain it, but if you do your research, you'll probably find uh, some somewhere where they sell that, and um, they're probably interesting for you, I don't know, I'm just doing some sort of community service. Bye-bye.